I never was sick. You know, so it's very strange to have someone tell you you have cancer, but you don't feel sick at all. The news hit 52-year-old Robert Hames hard. A routine physical revealed an elevated PSA. He had prostate cancer. It kind of came fast and furious, and there was a lot of decisions to be made, so it was kind of really not really have much time to really think about it. The American Cancer Society estimates there will be more than 200,000 new cases of prostate cancer in North America this year. About one in six men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. Because it causes no symptoms, it's often found during a routine checkup. Prostate cancer is the most prevalent cancer in men over the age of 50. So it's actually much more common than uh, we think it is. Dr. Andrew Wagner is a surgeon at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center's Prostate Care Center. He says most families who receive this diagnosis are faced with many decisions, including whether to take a watchful waiting approach, undergo radiation treatment, or have surgery. There's a number of factors that go into the decision-making process about how we treat prostate cancer. Um, they include age, uh, the general health of a patient, uh, and whether they have comorbidities or other medical problems that might preclude or exclude certain treatments. The, the other thing that we take into account is whether we think the cancer is contained within the prostate or is starting to spread outside the prostate or even into the surrounding uh, structures like lymph nodes or bone, and that's called metastasis of cancer. We were lucky. We barely got it in time because um, it had spread basically out as far as it could go without crossing over into anything else. All the numbers say that, you know, the, the surgery is better at my age. If I was 75, you know, it would be a different story, you know. So, you know, plus I have two young children, you know, I need to be around for them, so. Robert chose to have nerve-sparing laparoscopic radical prostatectomy. Unlike traditional prostate surgery, surgeons access the pelvic area using tiny instruments and cameras, which give an improved, magnified view of the prostate and surrounding structures. We use four small incisions. Uh, one is in the belly button. There's three others uh, spaced across the abdomen to access the pelvis and do the operation. And one of the main uh, advantages of this is that the blood loss during this operation is far less than that experienced during a traditional or open radical prostatectomy. Other advantages of the laparoscopic prostatectomy include less post-operative pain, quicker return to normal activity, and a shorter hospital stay, on average, one night. Probably the biggest fear is, as a guy, you know, is, is sexual function is one thing. Uh, the other part is incontinence, you know, I mean, not being able to, you know, to walk around, you know, with having to be padded or whatever, you know, and not having control. Dr. Wagner says shorter catheterization time decreases the risk of bladder problems. And overall, this procedure produces fewer sexual side effects. If we're able to perform nerve sparing surgery, which we can 90% of the time, about three quarters of men who are potent preoperatively are able to regain their erections postoperatively a year after surgery. Robert was back to regular activities just a few months after surgery. His advice, if you need surgery, have it done laparoscopically if you can. It was really very little in the way of complications and stuff. And that's the big difference, and, you know, you don't have this big incision to worry about, you know, and, um, you know, I didn't have any bleeding or anything. And um, it was it definitely went much, much faster, I think.